Welcome to the results section on the Montana Early Warning System. In this lesson, we will show you a school level report, how to read it, and what everything in the report means. If you have any questions or concerns about the Montana Early Warning System, please contact Eric Meredith at 406-444-3642 or email at emeredith at mt.gov. There are three reports available in the EWS, the school report, student summary report, and the student detail report. Each one is designed a little differently and for a specific purpose. The three reports on separate web pages and with the EWS overview page make up the EWS in GEMS. This lesson will focus on explaining the school level report and what information is available in that report. You may recall the early warning system is designed so that it predicts the probability or percent chance of a student dropping out based on their current data. The school report was designed for the purpose of being able to look at school-wide results and trends of those percentages, among other things. When EWS data is uploaded in GEMS, this is the first report the website automatically directs you to after a successful upload. An example of a school-level report is shown on this slide. School-level reports are available for each school or district you are responsible for and have access to. Using the school report, you can also compare results between grades. For example, you can compare how many of your 7th grade students are at risk for dropping out compared to your 8th grade students. This report will also list the statewide average results for each category, so you are able to look at how your school compares to the rest of the state in each category. The school report also displays the results of the last two data uploads, the current and previous uploads. Including the last two uploads also allows you, as the user, to see how things have changed since the last time data was uploaded. The school level report also shows other data, which will be discussed in detail during the demonstration. We will now log into the early warning system to show where the school report is and how the report works. Remember, you need a GEMS secure login and password along with the access to the EWS in order to access the report. You also must have data uploaded into the system to see the report. The good news is, even if you not uploaded data into the system for your school, Chances are at least one student in your school was at a school in the past that has uploaded data for that student. Any student that was previously in a school that uploaded data and is now enrolled in your school will have the EWS results you can view. This is useful for schools that want to see where the reports are like now and how the EWS works before they upload data for the entire school. Once you're logged in, click on data at the top. Go to student characteristics and click on that. Click on Menu at the left edge of the page. Go to the Early Warning System and click on that. A list of the four pages available in the Early Warning System will come up. Click on the second one in the list, the School Report. Whenever data is uploaded into the EWS, GEMS is automatically directing you to this report once the upload is complete. For the School Report, you must select in the drop-down menu the school, district, or calendar of students you wish to view. Only the districts and schools you have access to will show up in the drop-down menu. Each calendar that has been entered into Infinite Campus at your schools will be available. This allows some school to look only at certain students, such as students enrolled in an alternative high school. You may also select more than one school, district, or calendar. After selecting the subset of students you want to see, click on the View Report button. Before we get into all the data aspects of the report, we need to cover the report dashboard and its capabilities. This is the area just below the drop-down menu. At the far left is the ability to move to other pages of the report. This feature is not needed in the school report, since the school report is designed as a one-page report. The important parts to know about the dashboard is it allows you to save or print the report. If you click on the disk icon, there are several different formats the report can be saved as. For this report, it is recommended to use the PDF or Word document format. Once the file is saved, it can be shared with colleagues through email or other ways. Remember to save it in a secure location. Even though the school report does not have student level data in it, this is sensitive information. To print the report, click on the printer icon. At the upper left hand of the corner of the school report, is a table that summarizes the risk status of students dropping out at your school. All rows in this table allow you to compare your school results to that of the statewide average. 
The top row of this table lists the number of students at your school that are missing data for at least one variable in the EWS upload file. The EWS will still provide results for these students, but keep in mind, the more accurate data you provide on each student, the better the results will be. The next three rows in the table show the number of students identified as being potential dropouts. The Montana EWS assigns two levels for potential dropouts, at risk and extreme risk. Students identified is the total of all at risk and extreme risk students. Students with an extreme risk level are any student that have a 40% probability or higher of dropping out, while at risk students have between 15% and 40% probability of dropping out based on their current data. These cutoff values were determined using statistical analysis of historical data. The report allows you to compare your percentage of kids identified at each level to that of the statewide average. The table on the upper right of the school report gives some background about the report. Total students enrolled is not actually the number of students enrolled in the school, but the number of students that the EWS data has been uploaded into GEMS. Below this, the dates of the last two EWS data uploads are provided. A link to the student summary report is also available in this table. The next lesson will cover the student summary report. Each graph in the school report is broken down in a similar way. First, the graphs show the results for each age group of students. Take note, the graph breakdown is not actually by grade after eighth grade. The graph breaks down pre-high school students by grade and breaks down high school students by the number of years they have been in high school. The last breakdown of the graph is for all students combined. Keep in mind that all the students' state average is for all grades 6 through 12. For each age group, the graph shows three bars, a blue one for the statewide average, a red one for the current EWS run at your school, and a green one for the previous EWS run at your school. There is a separate model for students with more than four years of high school, but the data for those students is not shown in the school report since this is such a small group of students. Displaying these graphs in this kind of breakdown allows you to compare several things. You can first compare your school results to the state average. You can compare your results to your previous results, and each of these comparisons can be made at the different age groups. The first graph in the school report shows the breakdown of a student's dropout percentage at your school. Remember, the model gives each student a percentage chance of dropping out, ranging from 0 to 100%. This graph, titled Percent Students Identified as At Risk, shows the percentage of students at each age group that are identified at risk or extreme risk. You will notice two colors in each bar. The light blue is the percent of students identified as at risk, and the purple is the percent of students identified as extreme risk. In GEMS, you can move the mouse cursor over each bar and a display will pop up telling the exact percent of students that fit into that category. Each of the lower four graphs displays the same type of data, except for the individual risk factors, instead of dropout percentage. There is a graph for each of the following risk factors, grades, behavior, mobile students, and attendance. These graphs show the percent of students that have been identified as having those respective risk factors. For a student to be identified as having one of those risk factors, they must have a risk factor calculation above 1.25. If a student has a risk factor of 1.25 and grades, that means based on grades alone, the odds of that student dropping out is 1.25 times the odds of an average student dropping out, with all other factors held constant. Some of these risk factors get very large, even into the thousands, and can give you an indicator of how strong that risk factor is for that particular student. That concludes this lesson on the school level report in the EWS. This slide shows the remaining lessons, including the next one in the series, Making Sense of the Results, Student Detail Report.